Hi everybody, um, today we're going to start talking about series and summation notation. So um, a series is when you take all of the terms of a sequence and you add them together. So we're still working with sequences, except instead of just listing them, now we're adding them together. So a finite series is where you're just adding together a set um, number of terms, like maybe they want the first four terms or like five through ten. But an infinite series is when you keep adding until infinity. And you can tell it's infinite by the dot, dot, dot. So there's a special way that we write these series, and it's called sigma notation. That's probably how you'll see it. But um, you'll also see it called summation notation. So um, you start by writing this symbol. That's sigma. It's a um, Greek letter. Um, the number on the bottom, so this number, is telling you which term to start with, your starting term. So if it says i equals 1, that means to start with your first term. The number on top tells you which term to end with. And that um, expression to the right, that's just your sequence rule. That's your sequence. So if you look in this, in this example right here, my first term is 2, because if you plug in 1 right here, you get 2. My second term is 4, my third term is 6, and my fourth term is 8, because I went from terms 1 to term 4. Add them all together, and that is your series. Okay? And notice if it's an infinite series, your ending term is just infinity. So let's see if we can write um, this a series in summation notation or sigma notation. So first you have to decide what type of series it is. Since I'm adding 25 each time, I know, I know it's arithmetic. Well, let's write a little arithmetic sequence. A1, uh, my first term, plus n minus 1 times d, which is also 25. So my rule is just... 25 n. So I can start by writing my sigma and I'll write my rule right here, 25 n. Now I can see that I'm starting with my first term, so I'll say n equals 1. Oh, I do want to point out here I'm using n's. Um, in the examples they use i's. It can be any variable. Now we just have to figure out what my ending term is. So this is my first term, this is my second term, this is my third term. You can see that they skipped some terms to get to 250. So to figure out which number term that is, I'm going to plug it in, solve for n, and I get 10. So I start with my first term and I end with my tenth term, and that is sigma notation. All right, um, let's try another example. So you can see that this series is geometric because now I'm multiplying by a number. Okay, so let's first write the rule for this series. So it's a sub 1, which is 6, times r, which is also 6, to the power of n minus 1. Now in this case, since our bases are the same, I actually can combine those two um, terms. Remember, my rule for multiplying with the same base is to add the exponents. 1 plus n minus 1 is just n. So this is my rule. So I write it off to the right. You can see that I'm starting with the first term, so I say n equals 1. And since I see these three dots, that means that this series um, continues infinitely, so my n term is infinity. And this is the um, sigma notation for that series. All right, now let's actually find the sum of the series. So remember, what they're asking you to do, at least for this problem, is they're asking you to start with the fourth term, and add up all the terms up to term 8. So they want to do the 4th term plus the 5th term plus 6 plus 7th plus 8th. So really all we're doing here is plugging in numbers. So to find the 4th term, we would plug in a 4. We'll simplify that in a second. Plus the 5th term, so we plug in a 5. Plus the 6th term. plus the seventh term, and then one more, plus the eighth term. So if we simplify this, I have 19 plus 28 
plus 39 plus 52 plus 67, which equals 205. Now you can see that, especially if these numbers were really large, this can be a little bit time consuming. So luckily there are a, a couple shortcuts we have for these. So the first shortcut is if you're taking the sum of 1. This is essentially saying that every single term in your series is 1. You're doing 1 plus 1 plus 1 for however many terms. Well, since you're just adding 1 over and over, your answer is your ending term because you're adding 1 that many times. Um, another trick is if you're taking the sum of the series just i. That means essentially you're doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up until your ending term. So, so you don't have to do that every single time. There is a shortcut for this, and it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So you take your n term and you plug it in right here and right here. And the last one is if you're taking the sum of the series i squared. So instead of doing 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared up until your n term, you can use this formula, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6, to help you out, to save you some time. So let's try um, just those first two. Here I'm taking the sum of 1 from 1 to 34. So essentially I'm adding 1... 34 times, which means my answer is just 34. So that's definitely a special um, series you should look out for. Here you can see that I have, um, I'm taking the series of just k. So essentially what they're asking me to do is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Now that's not too bad for 6, but what if your n value was 200? That would take you a really long time to add up. So we're actually going to try using our little formula here. We just take our n term, which is 6, and plug it in. 6 times 6 plus 1 over 2, which is 42 over 2, which is 21. And that is all for today. Next week we will start to get more in-depth with our series and our summation notation.